For those of you of whom have already seen the third Jurassic Park movie in the incredibly popular movie franchise, you might think that you are already well aware of the designs, behaviours and size of the legendary Spinosaurus that many scientists originally believed could have rivaled against the Tyrannosaurus Rex back in its heyday. Unfortunately, the information portrayed in the movie at the time was, and still is to this day, incredibly unreliable, and more and more information is being discovered today that completely turns over what scientists and researchers originally thought about the creature so many years ago. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be going over the mystery of the Spinosaurus and the elusive nature behind the creature. What do we know about the creature? Unfortunately, before we can talk about what we don't know about the creature, we need to first discuss what we do know about the Spinosaurus and its nature. The name Spinosaurus roughly translates from Latin to mean the spined lizard. Today, scientists and paleontologists have already constructed a partially completed skeleton of the creature based off of fossil findings located in Egypt. Although they weren't complete in their findings, they were able to estimate missing bone structures by looking at the discovered fossils and piecing them together like a piece based off of similar dinosaurs of the era. Of course, as might seem obvious with this type of paleontological method, this has led to a wide range of debate among research scientists and paleontologists as to the creature's true size and skeletal structure. However, more fossils are being found every few years that helps us to get a better picture of the natural species of the creature and what it most likely would have more accurately looked like out in the wild. From the gathered fossils thus far, scientists believe that the Spinosaurus was roughly 41 to 59 feet in length, weighing anywhere from 7.7 .7 to 23 tons in weight, given its age. The species most likely stood at 14 feet tall, slightly shorter than the 15 to 20 foot tall Tyrannosaurus rex, with a massive sail-like spine running down the length of the back that would have allowed the creature to look much taller compared to other species of its size. Outside of that gathered information, most of the knowledge pertaining to the creature has been entirely speculative, and the scientific community relied solely on the shape and dimensions of the skeleton to come to know the majority of information surrounding the creature. The problem with skeletal reconstructions. As was made quite obvious earlier, there is a huge problem when it comes to the skeletal reconstructions of the creature of which led us into the first real issue of trying to understand the Spinosaurus from a group of fossils uncovered that do not make up a complete skeleton yet. Not only are the research scientists forced to attempt to piece together based upon other fossils found in the region, being an incredible gamble on whether or not the same species was used throughout, there is overwhelming evidence that this might be the case for the Spinosaurus. There has been a continual debate on the size estimates of the creature, and, with recent findings, many paleontologists believe that two distinct species of Spinosaurus had been represented in the fossil's first reported literature, and constant debate today continues on whether or not the Spinosaurus known as the S. Egypticus, of which was named after the fossils recovered in Egypt, might have a distant ancestral cousin known as the S. Moroccanus, of which refers to a similar yet incredibly different fossil finding of the Spinosaurus-like creature in Morocco, which might have a grouping of bones mixed in with the original species, throwing off the majority of the estimates. This is why, even today, scientists are still debating on the true size of the creature, with some believing that when one accounts for these mixtures of fossils, the true size of the Spinosaurus might have only been seven tons in weight, with a max of eight tons, and with a total length of nothing longer than 51 feet compared to the original estimate that was almost 60 feet long. Not only this, but scientists find that there is an overwhelming lack of information provided when one looks at the skeletal structure of an animal over the actual carcass of a recently deceased animal. Information such as the texture of the skin, the size and placement of organs, the possibility of the existence of furs, feathers, leathers or so on of which would naturally make up the creature's skin and many other pieces of information are completely lost 
when one can only analyze and predict features and information of the creature solely from a recovered skeleton. Given the fact that it is also incredibly rare to even recover a full-sized skeleton, this complicates matters even further. In fact, many genealogists today believe that birds are the primary species that descended from the reptile-like features of the dinosaur, and paleontologists have only recently uncovered feathering on such creatures as the Tyrannosaurus rex and different species of Velociraptors. The function of the dinosaur's hump Another interesting feature to notice about the Spinosaurus, of which it mostly derives its name, is the long sail-like spine that protrudes from the back of the creature. The function of the dinosaur's large hump has been at one of the most volatile centers of debate surrounding the creature, with many different groups of paleontologists and evolutionary theorists proposing their own idea on what purpose the spine could have performed. Many scientists believe that the spine could have been a tight skin-like structure similar to that of the wing of a bat that could have helped the creature to regulate its temperature by having large blood vessels running through the sail that could allow it to warm up its blood by sitting out underneath the sun, or to cool down by sitting in the shade or shallow waters. Other scientists are quick to assert that the large spine-like structure is massively larger than that of other species with similar formations, and that it could have helped to support a much larger weight than that of a skin-like structure and could have perhaps been similar to that of a large grouping of feathers and mostly been for display purposes, inciting fear in other enemies slightly larger than its own size or even for that of demonstrating breeding behavior. Lastly, one of the least popular theories that circles around the spine is that of the debate surrounding the creature's diet and posture. Scientists believe that the Spinosaurus could have perhaps lived the majority of its life in the water, and that the spine could have acted similar to that of a sail or to allow the creature to cut through water much more easily, and reduce drag similar to that of a large dorsal fin of the shark. Though many might not accept this theory, it has helped to promote other similarly held theories on the creature in other areas of evolutionary changes. What was the diet of the Spinosaurus? Although scientists originally believed that, due to its size, the Spinosaurus could have been in direct competition in resources with that of the many other large carnivorous beasts at its time, more evidence has surfaced that has completely challenged this notion surrounding the creature's diet. Many paleontologists have found striking similarities between that of the shape of the skull of the Spinosaurus and the shape of the skull of the modern crocodile, believing in fact that the Spinosaurus could have been a distant ancestor or ancestral cousin to the modern-day crocodile. This has led many scientists to believe that not only did the Spinosaurus most likely spend the majority of its life in the waters, but that the majority of its diet must have been that of groups of different types of fish, along with other marine animals at the time of its reign. This is due to the fact that the shape of the mouth of the Spinosaurus is perfectly attuned for the catching and eating of marine life, similar to that of the crocodile of modern times. Although the Spinosaurus could have spent a lot of time on land and have gone in much deeper areas away from waters compared to that of its modern-day counterpart, the majority of its diet would have relied on marine life throughout its days. The Natural Posture of the Spinosaurus Taking into account these contradictory findings of the creature's diet, the proposed hypothesis surrounding the nature of its large, protruding spine and the possibility of the creature spending the majority of its life in shallow or deeper waters, this has led to many to question on whether or not the modern-day understanding of the Spinosaurus and its natural posture is accurate in skeleton recreations. Paleontologists only believed at the time of the skeletal findings that the dinosaur walked on two hind feet due to the similarities in structure to that of the much larger Tyrannosaurus rex, of whom also had a much longer and larger tail to assist in balance. Interestingly enough, with the new findings and the analyzation of the two arms of the Spinosaurus being much larger and much longer than that of its Tyrannosaurus rex counterpart, many believe that though the posture of the Spinosaurus is similar to that of the larger carnivores, it most likely spent the majority of its time crawling and crouching down on all four limbs. 
This would explain its ability to swim much faster and for far longer than its carnivorous counterparts, along with its shortened tail and longer, more stable front limbs. Although it would have been possible for the creature to temporarily spend its time on its hind legs, traveling at greater speeds would have been much easier and much more stable on all four limbs, allowing it to reach top speeds dramatically faster and farther than that of the Tyrannosaurus rex. But what do you all think of these strange facts about the Spinosaurus and how the creature continues to baffle scientists even to this day? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thank you.